dear colleagues and uh, dear friends, I am very happy to be with you today sharing knowledge and experience for supporting you in the creation of successful Geopark. So, I would like to invite you to an experience. My talk today will not be a classic and academic conference, of course. It will be a real workshop, a practical and dynamic workshop which absolutely need your participation and interaction. Interaction between yourself and between your training organizers. First of all, geoparks were officially adapted as full UNESCO program in November 2015. And at this date, the UNESCO General Assembly takes a decision to create a new program called EGGP, International Geosciences and Geopark Program. This program is done with two complementary pillars. One pillar is called IGCP and it's more connected with uh, research in air sciences. And the second pillar corresponds to the UNESCO geoparks. UNESCO General Assembly has obviously adopted the UNESCO geopark guidelines which define all the criteria necessary for the creation of UNESCO geopark and there is eight criteria in this document. This uh, operational UNESCO Geopark guidelines are the reference document, document which should be used to create a UNESCO Geopark. To help territories to estimate the quality of their candidature, UNESCO has produced a checklist this checklist is made by 101 simple questions linked with the criteria from the guidelines. So during this presentation, we will all the time refer to these guidelines and we will use questions from the checklist. I would like to ask you to organize yourself in groups of 10 people maximum. Try to mix you according to your geographic background, to your profession and gender. You have five minutes to form this group and very quickly get to know each other if necessary. Just exchange your name, your profession and the location of your geopark project. Now please pause this video and reactivate it in five minutes as soon as your groups are formed. Hello again. I hope that you didn't have difficulties to form your group. To learn how to develop a Geopark project, we need a territory. And for that, I've created for you an imaginary territory. A territory which will just exist between us during the two hours of this workshop. An imaginary territory which doesn't exist in our planet, only in our imagination, or maybe it exists somewhere. Who knows? A territory where everything is possible. So, dear colleagues and friends, welcome in Geolandia. As you can see, Geolandia is a territory connected with the sea the Geolandia Ocean. Inside, there is a rural area. Let's discover the different main towns of Geolandia. In the north, we have Geolandia Town, the main city and capital of Geolandia, close to the seaside. Many tourists came here for enjoying of the Geolandia Ocean and practice seaside sports. More in the south, 
and still along the Geolandia coast, there is a granite port, a nice and peaceful small city with few tourists. And here, traditional fishery are still at time. In the southern part, we meet another coastal city. Its name is Ammonite City. As you can see, many tourists are coming there in summertime. It's a place with many bars and many dishes. Let's go in the inner Geolandia. We meet in the center Lost Mountain City. Until the beginning of the 20th century, it was an active city with gold mines. Now, the mines are closed and the economic situation is very difficult with a lot of unemployed persons. Finally, in the west, we have Nicolas Town, a little rural municipality with no any tourism, a poor area living mainly from agriculture and cheap bread. Let's follow discovering Geolandia. Now we have to imagine what Geolandia looks like. What are its landscape? In uh, Geolandia northern part, there is a wonderful mountainous area with peaks up to 3,000 meters. It's a cold region with snow in winter and the inhabitants of Geolandia love to go there for hiking. The Geolandia Central Park is a middle mountain area between 800 and 1,500 meters high. Its landscapes are unique and amazing, as you can see with many Jurassic Land stones forming sumptuous trees. Between the central part and the coast, we have a very special area called Geolandia Desert. It's a very arid area, quite desertic, with lunar or rather Martian-like landscapes and with a rare, surprising endemic fauna and flora. And of course, we have the marine environment, the Geolandia Ocean Seaside with magnificent coastal cliff and with a marine environment full of life and diversity. Inhabitants of uh, Geolandia feel themselves as people from sea and mountains and they are strongly connected with that territory. They are very proud to live there. Among these Geolandia inhabitants there is one who is very special, a person in love with his territory and who is dreaming for its conservation and its development. A person probably like you or like me. His name is Dimitri and let him present himself. Hello everybody. Happy to be with you. My name is Dimitri and I was born in Geolandia. I am a geologist. I love Geolandia which is a fantastic country with incredible people. I have walked everywhere in this territory. I have done all the path, all the mountains of Geolandia. But I like also observing the nature. Mainly birds. And I can stay hours looking them. I enjoy also observing, by night, the sky and the stars, this so pure sky that we have in Geolandia. I am also a photographer. I have done many photo exhibition in all Geolandia cities, for its population, Geolandia needs to be protected and to find an adapted development. I am doing all my best, day and night, to imagine possibilities. But it's difficult. What can we imagine? Even in deep love with Geolandia, Dimitri needs, as you and me, to take some holidays. So he decided to travel to a world. He arrived in Germany, in Berlin, and by chance, he decided to visit the ITB, which is the world's biggest tourist fair. That Dimitri doesn't know is that each year in ITB, the Global Geopark Network is there to promote 
or its UNESCO geoparks. The Global Geoparks Network is an international partnership of territories nominated by UNESCO as UNESCO Global Geoparks. These territories of excellence host uh, outstanding geological treasures, sites of ecological value, sites of cultural value, and they use this rich heritage that they host as a tool for sustainable development and for the well-being of the people and the local communities living in these territories. The, the most important thing is that we combine earth history, nature and culture in a holistic approach so the people can experience the value of our territory. This is what we really enjoy and what we also celebrate together with the UNESCO Global Geoparks Worldwide, which are currently 119 territories all over the globe. During all his travel back to Geolandia, Dimitri is thinking about all that he has discovered about UNESCO Geopark. He feels that creating a geopark in Geolandia should be a fantastic project, the project that he has ever dreamed for his territory. Just arrived in Geolandia, he wants to share this idea with his closest friend, a geologist. As in. So my dear friend, what do you think about the idea to develop an UNESCO Geopark project in Geolandia? Dimitri, I think that it is a very good idea. But explain me more about the UNESCO Geoparks. In Berlin, I get a video from Professor Gui Martini. Listen him explaining the UNESCO Geopark concept. As you have already understood above all, a UNESCO Geopark is a territory we must have a geological heritage of international value. In consequence, geoparks are places with a strong presence of the memory of the Earth. If the geological heritage is essential in a geopark, it is not enough. The territory aspiring to become a UNESCO Geopark must also have knowledge and consideration for its other territorial heritage, of its natural heritage. And this concerns, of course, fragile ecosystems, biodiversity, protected area, and so on. Geopark must also consider their cultural heritage, for example, historical monuments, elements of traditional architecture, archaeological sites, rock art. Likewise, a geopark must take into account its intangible heritage, which is, without any doubt, the most endangered heritage in the world. Traditional know-how, local languages, tales, legends, cosmogonies, and much more. The geopark must take into consideration around the geological heritage all its territorial heritage, highlighting all the interconnection that may exist between the geological heritage and the other heritage. This different heritage must be intimately connected with the population of the territory so that, thanks to their promotion and their valuation, new policies of sustainable development can be implemented. A UNESCO Geopark must be a living territory, with a population proud to live there, with a desire to imagine a different future for this territory. For the sake of clarification, 
I would like to share with you the semantic of the word geopark. As we all know, since the beginning of humanity, the first sacred sites were mainly geological sites that strongly marked the landscape, such as this mountain called Uluru in Australia, or this mountain in Tibet, which still receive important pilgrimage, or this one in Ethiopia. Much later, the first human civilization developed specific cults dedicated to Mother Earth. To represent air, this prehistoric population creates sculpture of female form, a fertile femininity, and this representation on the screen are around 20,000 years old. This cult of Mother Earth is found in Greek mythology, and in Greek language, this goddess Mother Earth is called J, Gaia, Geo. From the Geo prefix, other words have been developed over the time. Geometry, the measure of the Earth. Geography, the description of the Earth. Geomorphology, the form, the shape of the Earth. And geology, the study of the Earth. Consequently, in the name Geopark, we have Geo, which means the Earth, Mother Earth, and Park, a park, a zone, a space. Therefore, conceptually, etymologically, and practically, a Geopark is absolutely not a geological park, as it is not an opener geological museum. Enthusiasm is growing, and now the two friends are very excited with the idea. Before going ahead with the Geolandia Geopark project, Dimitri decides to meet a politic, the president of the Geolandia regional government. Professor Dimitri, you have all my support. Please follow with your Geopark project and keep me informed on its evolution. Dimitri and his friend and other geologists begin to work on the project. Very quickly, Dimitri contacts the Geolandia UNESCO Commission to inform them about the local volunty to realize a UNESCO geopark in Geolandia. By that, UNESCO is informed about what's happening in the territory and will provide to Dimitri and team all necessary information on UNESCO Geopark process. They are all doing intensively the inventory of uh, geological sites. Dimitri, who alongside all his quality, is also an excellent video creator and he produced a short documentary to present the geological diversity of Geolandia. Here we can see the fantastic uh, Geolandia waterfalls, curving uh, limestones, Jurassic uh, limestone, the famous uh, highest mountain of Geolandia in Jurassic limestone there. And uh, the quaternary extinct uh, volcanoes, they were still active. 3 million years ago and we can perfectly see the structure and fantastic basaltic uh, columns probably one of the more beautiful in the world and a very special crater with eyes at winter time this is a desertic area of Geolandia very special place red but a very very interesting uh, biodiversity, endemic fauna and flora. Here are dinosaurs' eggs and nests perfectly conserved and they were studied here by international scientific teams from many years, from the years 30s and uh, 40s. And the famous Geolandia dinosaur tracks that we can follow during two kilometers a more long in the world and a very specific fossil 
the Hydropithecus, unique species, uniquely found in Geotamia. They were living there six million years ago, in the rivers and in the sea. Look how they are fantastic fossils. Hola, soy Joan Fancoberta, soy fotógrafo, trabajando casi de una manera exclusiva para la revista National Geologic. Entre mis reportajes recientes se encuentra eh, toda la documentación que he venido haciendo desde hace ya más de 10 años de los eh, hidropitecos. ¿no? Los hidropitecos fueron descubiertos por azar por un paleontólogo de origen italiano, Jean Fontana. Uh, Jean Fontana estudió en el seminario de Digne, uh, tenía una vocación religiosa, ingresó en el seminario y allí se entusiasmó con las ciencias naturales, con la geología, etc., hasta el punto de que Fontana en una zona que se llama San Benoit, donde hay unos parajes, una cascada eh, maravillosa, pues encuentra los primeros vestigios de hidropiteco. ¿no? Efectivamente, al principio, pues eh, no saben que, que se trata de un nuevo homínido, eh, le dan diferentes interpretaciones, pero un estudio más detallado les lleva a, a resolver que efectivamente se trata de una especie nueva, desconocida hasta entonces. ¿no? Se les denomina hidropitecus, es decir, monos de agua. Su característica eh, insólita y realmente espectacular es que carecían de las eh, extremidades inferiores y que seguramente permitía pues, su locomoción, su desplazamiento en, en el agua. ¿no? Pues hay unos eh, fósiles que todavía están en el fondo del mar ¿no? y que fueron descubiertos casualmente por unos submarinistas eh, aficionados. After a long period of work and field investigation, Dimitri and his uh, geologist team consider that they are the base of the Geolandia project. They have done a huge inventory of the geological sites and they have structured them inside three main clusters. In the north, a cluster of sites connected with a majority of sites with Hydropithecus. In the eastern part, a cluster of sites with the Quaternary volcanoes. And finally, in the south, in the Geolandia desert, a cluster of sites with dinosaur eggs and footprints. They draw a line encompassing the free cluster and decide that it is the territory of Geolandia Geopark. Dimitri and his team consider that now they are ready to present the Geopark candidature. I have the best fossil and mineral shop of all Geolandia. People in Geolandia love geology. Many a fossil and mineral shop owner wants to be part of Geopark project. With all the work done with my friends geologist and with the interest of the population for geology. I think that we can now send thy Geopark candidature. So they send this candidature following the official pro process, which is sending the candidature dossier to the UNESCO National Commission, which will send the candidature to UNESCO Geopark Secretariat in Paris. UNESCO Secretariat in Paris doesn't take decision on the Geopark candidature. Decisions are taken by the UNESCO Global Geopark Council, but to simplify in this presentation, we are going to consider in this workshop that the decision is taken by the Geopark Secretariat. So, what will be the UNESCO Geopark answer to the Geolandia Geopark candidature? You need to speak between you in each one of your group and decide if UNESCO decision will be yes or no and explain your choice to those groups. Now please pause the video during the time of your chat exchange and reactivate it when you will have decided if it's yes or no.
Welcome back. So you have decided? Is it yes or is it no? Let's see the answer from a UNESCO secretariat. No. No. You have some good point. In particular some sites of geological heritage. As the hydropothecus or the dinosaur eggs. Are clearly of an international value. But. 1. A UNESCO Global Geopark is not a collection of sites or areas, it's a territory. 2. A UNESCO Global Geopark is not a geological open air museum. 3. People involved in selling of minerals and fossils cannot be involved in a UNESCO Geopark project. 4. You have overlapping with another UNESCO designation and you don't have considered them. No. I'm sure that uh, you all found that answer, no. What are going to do Dimitri and Geolandia Geoparty now? I think that one main reason of the reject of our candidature was because some of people involved in the Geopark project have shop of fossil and minerals. It's clear that this can't exist in the UNESCO Geopark. You are right. I am going to speak with them and trying to find a solution. I have spoken with Dimitri and I have understood the situation. I want to be part of the Geopark project. I have stopped selling fossils and minerals. Now I am selling pedagogic books and copy of fossils. I am doing a more nice job and I am whining more money than before. So this is very good. It's true that our Geolandia King Castle is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is located inside the Geopark territory. It's obvious that we need to develop relation with them. Of course. I am going to meet them. Yes. Professor Dimitri. Our UNESCO World Heritage Site will be happy to cooperate with your Geopark project. We will develop common projects, actions and training. Two UNESCO designation in the same territory needs to work in synergy and complementarity. Let's follow the inventory of geological site outside the three areas. Great Dimitri. We will do it. They have followed the inventory of geological sites and integrated many new geological sites between the three clusters and they have also enlarged the previous geopark territory. At this stage, one time more, they consider that the candidature should be ready. And they came back to send it on the same way. To the UNESCO National Commission, we'll send the candidature to UNESCO Geopark Secretariat. Again, what will be the UNESCO Geopark Secretariat answer to the Geolandia Geopark candidature. Exchange between you in each one of your group and come back here when you will have taken another decision. Now please pause the video. Hello again. I'm curious to know your answer. But let's see the UNESCO Geopark Secretariat answer. No. You have done some progress. But one time more. A UNESCO Geopark is not a geological open air museum. You need to link your geological heritage with the other's territorial heritages. Obviously, it's no. I guess that uh, no was also your decision. Dimitri and his friend don't really know what to do now. They are speaking with the politic and they have the great chance to have in Geolandia a politic intelligent with good ideas and vision a situation which doesn't exist everywhere.
We have done a huge work for this new candidature but we don't success. I think that in your project, you are just looking to geological heritage with only geologists working on it. You need to create, form now, a pluridisciplinary team. Please do it as soon possible. This is exactly what Dimitri has to do. Create an interdisciplinary team. A UNESCO geopark can be created only by geologists with a unique vision and concern on geological heritage. So, they integrate in the scientific committee new members. Hello. I am Mary and I am architect. Hello everybody. My name is Daniela. I am archaeologist. I am Lucy. I am a geopark guide. Hello. I am James. I am anthropologist. Now all the team is working months and months on the field, doing inventory, not only on the geological heritage, but also on the Geolandia natural heritage, on the cultural heritage, and on the intangible heritage. They have discovered many new sites, and now they have understood what is the UNESCO Geopark, linking geological heritage with the other's territorial heritage. The new team is enthusiastic. Dimitri has realized a series of videos to present the different heritage of Geolandia. Let's see what is the Geolandia natural heritage. We can see the famous uh, brown beer from uh, Geolandia. And here's a desert rattleback. Wolf, wild wolf. And the very big bat living there in the Geolandia desert. An uh, endemic insect, a terabyte. The giant blue wind runner. The Geolandia lynx. And here the Caracilla, the giant carnivorous running bird. And the fantastic marine life with the sea spider. Come the jelly. Many colored jellyfish there, and a unique species, the ocean phantom, a very poisonous jellyfish with the hanging bells which carry the poison. The well known phantus, frightening, and the giant squid, more than four meters long. Many, many frog fish. All of us, we would like to work in a territory with a such rich and surprising biodiversity. Dimitri has also produced a video on Geolandia cultural heritage. Let's see it. This is unique, a megalithic structure, totally enigmatic, created 3,000 years ago. And here also a megalithic construction we don't know the age, maybe 1,000 years ago, and here a big cliff engraved with a Roman text from the 5th century. A Roman temple dedicated to Diane, 
five centuries in the desertic part. And uh, traditional, typical Geolandia villages, uh, the inhabitants were do doing at the sixth century. Eleventh century, uh, a fortification, perfectly conserved. and a military observation tower from the 12th century. And these are the wing of the summer residence of the Hollandia's king, 13th century, and here enigmatic engraving with gold. They imagine that is from the 16th century, but they, uh, they are not sure. And the fantastic Geolandia Royal Library, located in, inside the historical Jolandia capital, 16th century. And we find there the more precious world's antique books. And at the uh, 19th century, the gold mines, which were active until the beginning of the 20th century. A so huge human history with a so huge earth history. Time of the earth and time of mankind are unique in uh, Geolandia Geopark. Thanks to the anthropologists of the team, they have worked on the Geopark intangible heritage and let's see now the, the result in another Dimitri video. We are listening now the unique, uh, traditional Geolandia sword singing. It's incredible. Listen. <laughs> and here in a small village, it's a unique carnaval, the devil mask carnaval, where the people take identification of the devil for one night. With the arrival of man, the solitary song of the birds merged with a new sound. A voice of its own, loud and musical, the whistle. The whistle. Today, just like centuries ago, the whistle is used to transmit news, to announce celebrations and funerals, romarias or pilgrimages, weddings and baptisms. It is not a language created for the intimate. It is for the public, for what must be said out loud and can be heard by all. and the Geolandia traditional uh, weaving, which is still active in the majority of the village in the inner part of uh, Geolandia. In each village we can see people weaving like that. A very living tradition. In uh, Geolandia they have the great chance to have a huge diversity of intangible heritage. This intangible heritage is a witness of the intimate relations that Geolandia inhabitants have developed with the Earth for thousands of years. Today, the intangible heritage is probably all around the world the more intangible heritage. And in Geolandia, they have also a very, very rare whistle language. And as you know, local language is a fundamental cement of all local traditional culture. When a language disappears, the culture quickly disappears. Don't forget that today a language disappears each 15 days. I hope that uh, 
how Jeolandia Jeo Park team is conscient of the need to protect actively their unique intangible heritage. So the map of the Jeolandia Jeo Park project has changed. Now many sites of all heritage categories are present, but they have also explored a bigger area than the one previously defined by Dimitri. And the team has found a lot of very important sites outside this previous limit, as for example, a new Hydropithecus perfectly uh, fossilized, a new dinosaur egg nest in the Geolandia desert, or this devil carnaval which occurs in a village of 400 inhabitants and is still unknown from Geolandia inhabitants. These new discoveries and new consideration for Geolandia territory create strong question and discussion inside the team. Professor Dimitri, I know that you have very interesting result with your inventories. This is fantastic. Yes, Mr. President. But all the discoveries that we have done are creating for the team a problem. We don't know. Now, what can be the adapted boundaries for the geopark? I understand. Why are you not sending your time to visit an experience in UNESCO Geopark and learn from their experience? I will finance their travel. You need to prepare your luggages. We have decided to send you to visit a UNESCO Geopark. This is the best way for you to learn and solve our problems of the Geopark boundaries. But which Geopark are we going to visit? You will visit the Basque Coast UNESCO Geopark. It is located in the northern part of Spain, close to the sea. It is a very nice place and they have a lot of experience. The team for the first time discovered in a Côte Basque UNESCO Geopark what is on the field a UNESCO Geopark. And they discuss a lot with uh, Asiel Hilario, the Geopark Scientific Coordinator. The United Nations Cultural Agency UNESCO designated this area as a global geopark in 2015. We talked to the Geopark Scientific Director, Asiel Hilario, to find out more about this spectacular place. In the rocas del planeta está escrita la historia de la Tierra. 4.500 millones de años de historia, página a página, se han podido escribir en diferentes lugares del mundo. El, lo primero que hay que entender es que los geoparques son proyectos de desarrollo local. Por, y por lo tanto, un geoparque no tiene sentido si no hay gente que lo habita, si no hay gente que vive en ese, en ese territorio. La manera fundamental por la que un geoparque aporta desarrollo a un territorio es a través de la cultura, a través de la educación, a través de que la gente que vive en ese territorio entienda su paisaje, entienda su tierra de una manera diferente, de una manera en la que antes, nunca antes lo había entendido. The team understood the strategy of this geopark to provide a sustainable development to its population. As it's the situation in Geolandia, the coastal area there has a strong tourism, but the inner rural areas are still very poor and without any development. For that, the Geopark has organized Geopark discovery routes connecting the coast with tourism to the inner areas to create so a new tourist circulation and a sustainable development to the rural poor areas. Coming back to Geolandia, the team has numerous meetings. And working on the Geolandia map, they realize that the main entrance city in Geolandia is Geolandia town. And from this town, they can irrigate the inner part of the territory. So, to integrate the important new discovered site and Geolandia town, they need to adapt the geopark limits. So they define new limits that we are 
looking on the screen. Now I think that we have our Geopark project ready. We have done an informal association between us with some friends to manage the Geopark. And we have a global vision on our territory development. We can send now our candidature. Great Dimitri. You are the best. Let's send the candidature. So, another time, they send their candidature following the same process that now you know. What will be at this time the answer from UNESCO Geopark Secretariat? I leave you a changing between you and please pause the video and come back when you will have find the answer. Welcome back. I hope that you get fruitful exchanges. Let's discover the answer from UNESCO Geopark Secretariat. Sorry. But. No. You have done an informal management structure. But this is not good. You need a formal and legal management structure. You need a permanent team working for the Geopark. You need adapted funding. You should develop networking with others geoparks. Your geopark need pre-existing limits, etc. No. In a geopark process, limits are an important practical and symbolic subject. Limits. Limits. What does they mean with limits? To better understand, please, let's have a look on these two maps. On the left, the USA map, and on the right, the European map. What are the main differences? In the USA map, all administrative limits are straight lines, and in Europe they are very complex. Why is this difference? Because at the time of the colonization in North America, the colonizer didn't consider that local population were living there for thousands of years. They consider North America as a virgin territory without history. And so, they have drawn straight lines to divide and distribute the territory. In Europe, they have thousands of years of history, of fight and wars to different territorial identity. And all this history is included in the state limits. It's for this reason that the limits are so complex. And here we have another map. On the left, the map of Australia with straight lines for administrative boundary. And on the left, the China's administrative map. We have the same differences for the same reason that I have already explained. Just for the pleasure, we come back with the map of Australia and here is the Australian map with the division connected with indigenous population. So, geopark limits need to follow pre-existing limits and need to correspond to a true territorial, cultural identity recognized and accepted by the local population. Do your geopark boundary correspond to pre-existing limits? So the solution seems to be easy. We need to place in the map all pre-existing limits. The limits of municipalities, province, etc. We have decided to no integrate municipalities which are not totally enthusiastic with the Geopark project. It will be possible to integrate them later. But the more important sites of the Geopark are inside the limits. Another important decision is that uh, Dimitri has integrated in the team a new member, a local stakeholder who owns a traditional restaurant using exclusively organic products 
from local agricultors. Do you have a clear and independent budget secured for the next four years? We need for the Geopark of financial stability. But where are we going to find this money? I am going to ask our central ministry for funding. I will also ask to the regional government. And also I will ask the 11 municipalities which are inside the Geopark to participate financially. You will see. They will support our Geopark project. The Geopark project create a lot of enthusiasm everywhere. Central government. Regional government. And all the municipalities have agreed to provide regular funding for the new four years. Do you have a management body with a legal existence? President. We need a management structure for the Geopark. A legal management structure. What can we do? Our Geopark is composed by 11 municipalities. All in the same district. We just have to create an intermunicipality structure involving the 11 municipalities. This will work and will be perfect. I have a good news. Now we have an official management structure for the Geopark. That's very good. But you need to create also a scientific committee. It will be necessary to provide good advice and help to take the best decision. This is fantastic. Having now an official management structure. But it's important that you integrate inside population representatives as well as private stakeholders. And Tim is going to share with us all what I have done. On fragile geological site, do you develop protective measures against erosion? We are working on site management, working on site conservation, where it's necessary. For example, here, we have built a site museum to protect two hydropathicus perfectly fossilized. Do your more important geological sites benefit from a conservation status? We will also provide an official conservation status to our endangered sites into our main geological heritage sites. We also inform clearly our visitors about the regulations and things to do or not to do. Did your geopark appropriately visible in the area? A geopark logo is necessary as well as a communication strategy. We love very much our geopark logo. It wear the identity of our territory. We have our mountains and river, and the connection with our seaside symbolized by the starfish. Do you have a geopark signage along the road and on the main sites? To promote our territory and develop a geopark brand, we have understood that our territory need visibility. This visibility is necessary to provide a sustainable development to our territory. As allowed by our national law, we have also placed information panel along the main routes in the different geopark entrance. Do you have public information structures as info center, etc.? In the more important geopark town, the city where are arriving most of the visitors by boat or by airport connection, we have opened a small geopark information center. Visitors can learn there what is the geopark and also meet Geopark guides for the discovery of our territory. Do you have leaflets? Publications presenting your Geopark? For an adapted communication and a good Geopark visibility, we have realized, with professional, a leaflet presenting the Geopark, and also we have print a map of our territories presenting all the sites which can be visited by tourists. One time more, they considered that their candidature should be ready and they came back to send it on the same way to the UNESCO National Commission will send the candidature to UNESCO Geopark Secretariat. Again, what will be the UNESCO Geopark Secretariat answer? Now please, 
pause vidéo. But let's see the UNESCO General Park Secretariat answer. Sorry, but no, no, I've done huge progress. That's great. Congratulations. Therefore, you didn't have developed educational line. You don't have partnership policy. You don't have an action plan. Your team is not trained. And something very important. You don't have your population informed and involved in your geopark project. No. <laughs> I am fed up. What are we going to do now? It's clear that we need to train our team. We are going to send them for participating in a UNESCO geopark course. Sure this is an investment. But I am sure that with this training we will save time and money. They have taken a very good and necessary decision. Training the team in the UNESCO Geopark and sending the team in one of our intensive course. Has a member of your team undertaken a Geopark intensive course supported by UNESCO GGN? So, let's send our team in the intensive course in Greece. In Lesvos UNESCO Geopark. Before coming to the training course, I think uh, I was like a struggling. Oh, where are we going? How we can start? It's a complete course. You learn the process. You see the problems, you get to investigate best practice. A lot of lectures, a lot of sharing with our colleagues from other geoparks. With a good number of invited professors who are well, well experienced on uh, various geological, environmental and biological issues. Here is not just talks about uh, the geopark theoretically. You feel the geopark in action and practically. Through this course, participants have the opportunity to meet specialists with long experience on geopark building, but at the same time to meet people that are trying to establish uh, geoparks in their own country. Networking is one of the most important elements for a UNESCO Global Geopark. So. Tell me, how was the intensive course? Did you learn something? It was great. We know now what we have to do for achieving our Geopark candidature. But, we don't understand why you didn't send us there before. We could have saved a lot of time and money. And Tim is going to share with us all what I have done. Did your Geopark develop educational activities? We have developed educational activities. For example, we have organized workshop with a school, where they have created a wooden map of our Geopark territory. Do you have a basic action plan for the next four years? We have also developed an action plan for the next four years. In this action plan, we have considered all future actions of the Geopark. With for example, the Geopark team, the necessary investment, communication strategy, research strategy, the main steps for sustainable development, tourism development, etc. Do you have formal partnership with local stakeholders? We have also developed partnership with all local stakeholders. 
restaurants, hotels, homestay, agrofood producers, etc. This partnership clearly indicate the common commitments and rules for the Geopark Partnership criteria and visibility. Have you developed a Geopark branding policy with local products? We have developed with agrofood producers local Geopark products, and thus with organic and quality criteria. Now we have more than 20 Geopark local products. For example, we have the Geolandia specific goat cheese, which is very delicious. The famous strawberry marmalade from Geolandia Mountains, and wicker basket traditionally done. Are your local community and your local leaders actively and informally involved in your geopark? To have a necessary strong involvement of Geolandia population, we have organized public reunions in each one of the eleven villages of the geopark's territory. The result is fantastic. People begins to own the geopark. How it was exciting! The time that we have passed to involve all the population and stakeholder in our geopark project was fantastic. It's time to send now our last candidature. That's great. The candidature is ready. And they came back to send it on the same way to the UNESCO National Commission. We'll send the candidature to UNESCO Geopark Secretariat. What will be now the answer from UNESCO Geopark Secretariat? Again, I leave you exchanging between you. Please pause the video and come back when you will have find the answer. Hello again. I am sure that you have spent very inter intense moment of discussion. So, what is your feeling? At this time, is it yes or no? What do you think? Let's see the answer. Yes. 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 You have done a great job. Congratulations. Don't forget that before presenting your candidature, your geopark needs to really exist on the field during one year of activities. So, what are the next steps? You will have to receive, in your geopark, an expert mission composed by two people. At the end of their missio, they will redact a report on your candidature. This report will be analyzed by the UNESCO Global Geopark Council. The Council will take decision on your candidature and will present it to the UNESCO Executive Bureau for endorsement. This endorsement will happen on April of the following year. Yes, yes, yes! By waiting the validation mission. We are following learning on geoparks and we will be very active. All our team will participate in the next Global Geopark Network Conference. In Jeju. In September 2021. Please consult in detail the UNESCO Geopark guidelines and use the checklist a long time before presenting your candidature. To have a successful Geopark is not so difficult. Having from the beginning a good knowledge of the UNESCO Global Geopark. Following Geopark training course and participate in JGN meetings creating a pluridisciplinary team, taking time, years, to achieve the project before presenting a candidature, involving all partners, stakeholders, population, and more. And overall, dream, be imaginative, be innovative. I hope that you have enjoyed this experience in Geolandia with the Geolandia Geopark team. I hope that you have taken 
some fun, smile, and ideas. I wish you following working, dreaming, loving your territory, and developing new creative and efficient project of UNESCO Geopark. Uh, very good luck to all of you and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for your attention. We are waiting you in Geolandia Geopark.